Still in talking to that guy, talking about Isadora. Thank you, Kang. This game has sick music. It also has really cool graphics. It's also fun to sell. This is actually my favorite Donkey Kong Country, but I think for most people it's their least favorite. I guess I understand why people would like it the least. Because it is kind of different from the other ones. Alright, how do you input codes? Someone, quick, I need to find out. Donkey Kong Country 3 codes. I need tough stuff. I am tough stuff. I need hard mode. I can beat this game easy mode. L R R L R R L R L R Auto save. That was a feature and they didn't program it as a regular thing. There we go. I need tough stuff. T U F Yeah, Diddy Kong up in this bitch. You don't have a choice to do this. You have to go talk to Wrinkly. She gives you some words. I don't read. Thanks for saving my game. Thanks for nothing. It's an N64 there. Or as it was known at the time, the Nintendo Ultra 64. There are little references to some weird shit here. This game has like a banjo kazooie reference somewhere in it. <laughs> Funky Kong always the best, the best uh, tunes. There's a cave over there with a banana, banana, banana bird. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. Not yet. Lakeside Limbo. I will do my very, very best not to use save states at any point during this game. What's harder than you thought? Get Pearl. Kill Squeaks. I don't remember what that enemy's called. Use the A button. Uh, Sarah Vegans? Um, yeah. A lot of those characters? Like Jafar. What's Jafar's strength when he started out? On that mode, in that game. Jafar only has like 20% strength growth, or like 10% strength growth. And you normally don't notice, because he's only one strength from Cat. I'm not an expert in this game, but I know where some of the secrets are. This is like the, th the reason I don't like this game. Randomly occurring, randomly appearing green bananas. It's honestly just frustrating. It's like a bonus game you can't prepare for. Neither the bonus games in the previous games, or neither the the bonus games in neither of the previous games were randomly generated. I just don't like running around for various like reacting to where ban bananas appear. That's where a lot of the bonus games are in. Ellie. I can't tell you if Ellie is a boy or a girl elephant, but Ellie sounds like a girl's name. Oh no. I know about secrets. Hell yeah. So there's two bonus coins in every level, if I recall correctly, and uh, a coin in every level. And if you beat the level with both bonus coins, the flag flies, 
instead of hanging, and if you get the coin, there's a yellow flag as well as the normal one. I will do my best to make this a max percent playthrough. Um, the highest percent you can get is 103 normally, but if you if you're playing hard mode, tough stuff mode, and you get the max percentage, it actually registers as minus as uh, as 105 percent instead of 103 percent. all the secrets. I remember where a lot of them are, but I'm gonna get sloppy once, uh, once I get sufficiently far in the game. I honestly love uh, Kitty Cock's face. It's completely incredible. They did a really good job designing that character. I like everything about him. This game has great music. Let it be known. Dixie Kong's like easy mode. Oh god. Kitty Kong is a bit easier to use. So Dixie Kong is easier to use. Kitty Kong is different stuff though. You need both all the time. Not all the time, I mean sometimes. But being able to slow your fall on a platformer is really useful. I could have just flown from there, I don't know why I didn't. Missing bonuses is usually a pretty not a big deal, unless the level's an auto scroller. Because you can just go back to where the bonus is. You can exit levels by hitting start and select as soon as you finish all the bonuses, but you need to have already beaten the level. Why would you try to exit the level without, like, if you had an RDB? Water levels aren't that bad. Oh, I can collect that coin forever. You need 55 of that coin by endgame. There's only two things in the game you can buy, if I recall correctly, but one of them costs 50, which is quite a lot. There's a barrel that's supposed to be aimable in Donkey Kong Country 2, but I think if you're playing on emulator, it just spins. These enemies are cooler than Zingers. I like their bus sauce. This is the fate I have chosen for myself. There's a secret on the left side. You have to hold the skate up. Throw the barrel through it. Body. I've never... I don't remember ever... Oh. I can't go up here. I was about to say, I don't know if there are any items up here, I don't see any. There's a barrel rolling, you can jump right on it. It's kind of hard to time. I'll be here all day. There you go, you can run around on barrels. It's kind of cute. Cute little secret. There isn't a time limit per se, but uh, Cranky Kong beat the entire game in a certain time. And you want to be better than him. Let's get a banana fairy. And across the overworld there are banana fairies. Technically getting 100% is getting all banana fairies. And you can only get all banana fairies if you um, do all of everything else as well. For example, all like bear side quests. All, all uh, bonus coins. All of these things just get you all the banana fairies. <laughs> My favorite song in the series is probably Aquatic Ambience. Ambience. Followed by, um... That singer. Uh, Brammable Sick Rush Symphony. Blast, whatever it's called. And 
and then um, after that, probably. chance of this, so I better not fuck it up. Almost. I missed on guard. Forgot about that. Forgot about on guard. I'm doing fishy things. One thing that tough stuff does is if you ever have a Kong die, uh, the Kong is brought back to life by the time you try the next level. And the reason for that is that, um, die. The reason for that is that there are no Kong barrels anywhere in the game. So it'd be very, very difficult to, um... There are no checkpoint barrels and no Kong barrels. That's what tough stuff does. I really don't like it. Fuck off, singer. I remember if these enemies are called singers. They have a different name each game. This is the thing I only get one chance at. Not bad. There we go. Better not screw up the bonus barrel. Actually, I think you stay up here. Actually, baddies. Last character you obtained in reverse recruitment. Where did you go just get him? I'm not gonna try and get like max one ups, but I probably will get quite a stockade of lives by the end of the game. Damn, what are you doing then there, Barrel Guy? I like this level. Let's get his row. I don't think I've ever played a platformer that had like eight worlds and one of them wasn't a nice world. In my whole life, I don't think I've ever played a platformer like that. The longer a platformer is, the, the more likely it's going to result at some point in a nice level. Call that Befail's Law. Hello. You get a banana when you blow out of that. It makes me almost think that they were gonna just do like a banana there, and then thought that it was too cryptic, and then put a bonus barrel and played here with the banana under it. And it was just gonna be jumping to the banana to get the bonus barrel, but then it was like too hard for people just starting to get or something. I don't know. Later in the game, they put just like banana somewhere, and then we get it. I think all bonus barrels are in plain view. No, definitely not. There are some hidden ones. Music is great, atmosphere is great, enemies are funny looking. Why would I ever get on top of this house? There's a bonus barrel. Would you play Dust Force? I think I bought Dust Force with the intent of playing it, but I don't think I've played it yet. I've, if Dust Force is in fact the game that you're referring to. Or rather, Dust Force, the game I'm thinking of is the game you're referring to. Made that sound all weird. Dust Force is the one where people, um, where you have a broom and you jump around, and there's dust everywhere, and spikes, and like parkour. I like that trap. I think that enemy's called like a crampon in this game, or something weird. It's got a weird name. I think crampons are like the things that you put on snowshoes to make sure they stick to the ground. Murky Mill. Mountaineering shoes, rather. Yeah, I agree. It's a damn... I think there's a way through this without getting the elephant. I'm pretty sure there's a warp barrel in this area. I'm pretty sure there's a warp barrel in a lot of levels. I didn't understand how this worked when I was a kid, but now I get it, and it makes a lot of sense, and it's really cool. 
You're an elephant. There's rats everywhere. You can't see them. The level's too dark. It's too dark to see rats. When there's a rat in the light, the elephant freaks out because it sees the rat, and elephants are afraid of mice or whatever. So you have to kill rats without them ever being in eyesight, or else your elephant self will freak out. I think it's kind of cute. It's kind of a fun little gameplay mechanic. Did not get it all how it worked. See, this one walks out of the light, so you have to kill it while it's out of the light. I think I will forget so quickly again. It has a giant Y to show you that you can suck in barrels that you're not next to. Indicating the Y button. I'd never noticed that as a kid, but it's hell obvious. Now you have to use what you've learned to kill this guy. Kong was going to be in Donkey Kong 64, and then they replaced him with Chunky, who is his older brother, because they thought Kitty Kong would be too hard to implement or some shit, I don't know. Belgium. I think that's this guy's name. Obviously. Except this boss, most of the bosses in this game are like semi-puzzle bosses. Um, this one's pretty easy if you know how to fight him. It really scared me as a kid, because I couldn't figure out how to hurt him, and he was like cornering me and stuff, and he just looks mean. God damn it, I don't want to fight this creature. I think you can kill him in two barrels if you're efficient. I'm pretty sure the first time I played this game when I was a kid, the only coins that I ever got were like the boss coins that I only bought like in level bonuses and stuff. This game is really fun. I think there's one... Um, I think there's one canary. Banana bird. In every region. In every map. God. The tree levels all blend together in my head. It's very little distinguishing them. They're okay. I like all the tree levels. But just, you know, very little distinguishing them. Right down there's a warp barrel. The river I 
bass level is really fun. <laughs> you remember it, I see. The river I saw has got a lot of secrets in it, which I like. I played this game when I was really young. Probably a secret in this map. Probably. Maybe not. I thought there was. It looks like there is. Nope. I like couldn't. I didn't understand. How do I make it up? It's so cheap. Um, here must be the secret. Side race. Alright, there's like 20 things to do in this level, I'm not gonna do it all in one go. First order of business is to find all secrets. Also, there are bees. Just annoy, annoy. Thanks for making videos. <laughs> you are quite welcome. I quite enjoy making videos, so it's fine. Maybe. That's gonna cost me. Where's the coin enemy in this level? I didn't already get a coin, did I? I'll be real careful. Gotta be real careful. 
careful. Gotta go back. Pretty good chance I could die, honestly. Maybe after the game is a bit loud. Okay, I'll change that. But can you explain why in Silent Hill the mist makes everyone retarded? That's a really random question. Um, the mist doesn't make everyone retarded. The mist is a side effect of Alyssa's possession of the town. And, um... And everyone's not retarded. There are people who are crazy who are drawn to Silent Hill. And they are one of the big groups of people. Um, do I need to bounce? Not here. I'm gonna need to backtrack and get... Yeah, you need to bounce across this. Damn it, dude. I need my kitty Kong. You have to get that on my race attempt. Which is gonna be annoying. There's also a cult who are not, not dumb per se, but they don't understand. They have extremely archaic and backwards views of, of how the world should be. And um, their ignorance is what's causing the town to be like that. People who come to Silent Hill are insane, and the town does its best to show them what they need to see to make them... It's kind of ambiguous. Maybe to make them regret their crimes, and all the, the fucked up shit they didn't believe in, and maybe to um, enhance them as human beings. I'm supposed to be going fast, I still need to get that coin. I have to beat 1 minute 15 seconds, which I'm probably not going to do. James in Silent Hill 2. People who come to Silent Hill usually committed some very grave thing that they they regret, and they tend to go to Silent Hill as a perceived penance. But that's only half the games. The other half of the games, there's a crazy cult there, and the person is involved with the crazy cult, whether on accident or on purpose. Silent Hill 1 featured a guy who just happened to be involved with the cult. Silent Hill 2 featured a crazy person. Silent Hill 3 featured someone who happened to be involved in the cult. Silent Hill 4 featured a crazy person who was involved in the cult, but uh, they weren't the player character. Um, Silent Hill Origins featured a crazy person who happened to be vaguely, vaguely involved in the cult. Uh, Silent Hill Homecoming featured crazy people, and some cult stuff happened in the middle. Silent Hill Downpour featured some, a crazy person, and Silent Hill Shattered Memories retconned Silent Hill 1 and 3 to be about crazy people instead of the cult. So all in all, it's very inconsistent. There are people who love Silent Hill games that are about the cult, and there are people who hate Silent Hill games about the cult. I prefer games that are about crazy people. But people... the Silent Hill fan base is always like... Because it changes so much, the Silent Hill fanbase can't agree on anything. Like, somewhat- Silent Hill- Silent Hill 2 came out and everyone's like, where'd the cult go? I hate this game. And then Silent Hill 3 came out and it's like, whoa, what about the crazy people? Why don't we go back to the cult? I thought this was the new shit. Silent Hill 4 came out and it's like, whoa, why'd you fucking, why are we talking about crazy people? It's kind of like a Final Fantasy. You know what I mean? The most recent Final Fantasy can never be well received. It's like uh, 6 came out and then... I don't know about 1 through 5. 
I, I know about them, I play them, but like, I don't know how they fit into this. But, um, Final Fantasy VI came out and everyone's like, wow, this is the greatest game ever. And then Final Fantasy... Oh, I still need one. Final Fantasy VII came out and everyone's like, no, this isn't VI. I don't like it as much as VI. And then, well, a lot of people, it was their first Final Fantasy, so they liked it a lot. And then, um... Final Fantasy VIII comes out, and it's like, this game is shit compared to seven. And then, nine comes out, and it's like, whoa, what happened? I liked eight. And then ten comes out, and it's like, whoa, why are we like this again? I like I liked nine, let's go back to nine. And then twelve comes out, and it's like, no, I like ten more than this. And now thirteen's out, no one likes it. It's like Ocarina, Majora's Mask and all that. Zelda's really guilty of this, too fan base is made of so many people who are um, there's always a loud minority you think these would spin you get pushed off them but you can just sit on them like when Ocarina came out everyone's like this is the best game then Majora's Mask came out and most people liked it but it was like wow this is um, this is weird and different I'm pretty sure there's no one sex or saying that Brawl is better than Melee I'm pretty sure the only people who like Brawl more than Melee are the people playing Project M. I don't think Brawl was... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Melee is a great game for competitive. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say... Um, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say melee is better than my brawl is better than melee. Maybe like if they were like a Lucario player or something, and they're like, "Wow, Lucario is a really fun character. He's not in melee." Something like that. But um, uh, can't land on thing. For the most part, um, brawl does a much worse job rewarding skill compared to melee makes it a far worse competitive game. For example, tripping, for example, horrible balance, for example, a lower skill ceiling. I mean, melee's balance is good, but like, Brawl's balance is really bad. Really bad. There are unwinnable matchups in that game. Not that I'm some kind of Brawl expert or anything. about Smash is that the vast majority of players are just random people. Oh, look, it's fucking up. They are normal fags. They don't know about fighting games. That was dumb. I hope I don't need him. I'm pretty sure Brawl rewards skill less. I'm pretty sure um, high skill in melee tends to translate to dramatically higher win ratios than in Brawl. Whoa, here we go. Oh, the door at the bottom is open. I already know though. I already know that this will be hell. <sighs> this partridge is nearly impossible to... Avoid this bird. Did it. You need to open that. Oh no, you don't need to open that partridge. Fighting games are serious when people take them seriously. A lot of people don't even take melee seriously. If there are people who are seriously trying to put time into Brawl, then I'd say it was a serious fighting game. Is it actually better, Saxor? Is it just those three characters ruining the game? Damn it, I needed that. I want that coin. I know Ice Climbers have a lot of very good matchups. Like, their matchups tend to be insanely good. 
I'm pretty sure Ice Climbers are usually regarded now to be the second best character in the game. They used to be... Sheik. Not Sheik, what the hell. Again, it was Snake. It was Snake. Snake was usually regarded as the second best character in the game after Meta Knight. But, I don't know if people figured out Snake, but, uh, people don't usually talk about Snake anymore. People usually just talk about Ice Climbers. I don't know if Snake is really a whole lot worse. Or if Ice Climbers, just people fa got better at, like, the command grabs. Command grabs and the throw loops. Chain grabs. The trick with this one is just go slow, dump up the fucking thing. I have- all my friends, uh, don't like the idea of a 2, 2D fighting game. Like, 2D style art. Which makes me really sad. Sorry. Snake 2243. Solid. I think people usually say solid it was number two before, but now I think people say he's worse now. Mennonite has. I know Mennonite's like B attack, the one where he just makes a tornado. Does like 20% and is very, very difficult to beat. He does like a stupid amount of damage. And it's like super strong, like hitbox or whatever. Two secrets up here. What about, hold on. Got to your footsies. Ice Climber says infinite from basically any position with easy setups and get in as the worst character by like two tier. I thought Captain Falcon was regarded to be about as bad as Ganondorf. That always really surprised me because, um. Oh, I can definitely make that jump. That always really surprised me because Ganondorf is faster. And usually, fuck. I needed to make a team jump there. I have to re-enter the level. What's down here? Bananas and shit. Damn it, dude. That didn't follow me off the edge. Might have needed to make a team jump there too. So. What did Snake have? Wow, I actually lost. Well, now I definitely need to re-enter the level. Gotta do the whole thing. I already got the bonus coin. That stays. You don't lose bonus coins even if you die. It's no profound need to get the uh, parrot. I guess I will anyway. Damn it, dude. Same mistake. I don't understand why these guys destroy your barrels. Seems awfully mean of them. Okay. It's down here. Paradise, right? It's honestly, yeah, 2D fighting games do have. They run on the lowest specs, which gives them a big netcode advantage. Fighters on Steam isn't that great. Either. King of Fighters is a great game, but on Steam it's not that great. There are games with much better netcode than KOF Steam Edition. No, not every fighting game is 100% footsies. That's kind of a misleading thing to say. What Sa what what Saxor is trying to fuck me? I was like reading the chat. Uh, what Saxor is trying to say is that uh, there's no combo element to fighting games, to Smash Bros. Like, in other fighting games, there's a point where you're fighting and playing footsies together, and then someone makes a mistake, or someone gets red, something like that, and then all of a sudden, um, that person... Is there anything down here? Well, that's nothing. That's something. Um... Then all of a sudden, that that character goes into punish mode and does like a big combo, and that combo is like a different gameplay moment than a footsie part. It's like purely based on your execution rather than being based on like reads or anything like that. It's like a different element to fighting games. Do I need to do a throw here too? Nope, you can just naturally jump. That was dumb. 
Smash has no combos, or it Brawl has no combos, and uh, every other every other Smash game has very short combos that are usually uh, still not true fighting game combos because there's DI. There are things that the uh, opponent can do to affect how the combo lands and even make it not work at all. Yeah. Sagsor, yeah that. You can't beat this level, dude. This level's too hard. And also for the third time I missed that coin. I have three more coins by now. This game is fun as hell. Let's not get the parrot this time. The thing about saying every fighting game is 100% footsies is it's kind of true because the winner is decided by how footsies are played. Like even if someone has like huge combos that they go for and someone else has really short combos and it seems like someone's winning because they have huge combos, um, whether combos can even land in the first place is determined how footsies work. There's no fighting game where there's like a guaranteed punish for like a scenario that people can be put into that I'm aware of. Let's kill this green zinger. I want him dead. I need to switch characters. Why does this fucking thing make it so hard? You can't switch characters while you're jumping on it. Um, switch. Fuck. Switch. He needs to be in like a walking phase, or he needs to be behind me. There we go. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it's true that, like, uh, your bigger punishes are better. God. And, um... All that. But you can't win by merit if your combo's alone. Oh, God. Let's do our best to not die. That was so annoying. Um, please don't tell me I had to jump through. Oh, yeah, okay. That's just a G? That's all I got? Where's the second bonus going? big misconception that if a game is made for fighting game fans that it won't appeal to casuals. Usually things that are good for the high level will still be good for the bottom level. A good example of that... I don't know if I can say a good example of that. Injustice is a game that was very, very easy and accessible. And it didn't lose anything at the high level for it. And vice versa. I forgot that this was that level. It's almost fun as hell. Hell and R. Hell to drink, R to shoot. Pop. Oh, 
I don't know if TD fighting games really have less bullshit. Very ambiguous statement to make. My game should feel fair, don't get me wrong. Point. Mm, maybe you're right, Saxer. I do think that footsies do the vast majority of the the better player. Compared to other elements of fighting games, but you definitely do need to be good at all of those things. I definitely have practiced my punishes. No! Alright, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that was entirely not my fault. But also, the game lagged. This game actually lags. And there's like a lot of shit on the screen at the same time. And that's absolutely what happened. I'm not gonna say it's the game's fault, but it was definitely partially the game's fault. Execution, everything listed falls under footsies. Wake up game, yeah, wake up game I would call. Uh footsie that's complicated. Whether wake up whether stuff like that, like wake up pressure is still footsies. Arguably not. That's a complicated one. Fuck off coin. I'm like really afraid of jumping into water where there's a fucking potentially dangerous ass fish. Oh. I'm like trying to pay more attention to this fighting game conversation oh. than I am about fucking the game. level in the game and it's damn good that it's the last level in the game. 
All right, let's get our reward. What? You can't beat in my time. You made me so angry. That's a good point, Sexer. That's pretty much a good summation of how I feel. On why, on why Wicked Game wouldn't be footsies. But by that logic, um... Like a jump is not symmetric, but I guess you take it upon yourself to jump, whereas the opponent puts you in a wake-up state. This fight, I think, is dramatically easier for... Um, which I think is the same. Come here, asshole. God snake, that takes long. I used to think you had to like throw it up at him, and that made it a lot harder. Around. I think if you crouch in this corner, none of them can ever hit you. There's like all kinds of words right there, and I want to read them all. Definitely means different things to different people. What's this house? I don't think I've ever been here. I already did know there was a lost world. So we did dig. Whoa. I always loved how the overworld in this game worked. the difficulty of obtaining banana fairies is based on um, how many of them you have. But I keep on calling them banana fairies, it's Donkey Kong 64. Banana, banana birds. Oh yeah, girl. I really hate when people talk about BP. To be honest, that shit pisses me off. It's like, oh, I fought the number two again. It's just like fucking. It's a guy with like a thousand player points and like 10,000 uh, BP. It's like you didn't actually do anything. And everyone talks about BP and no one talks about BP. But even then, they're just numbers, dude. I mean, like, yeah, to some degree it's the success rate, but it's the success rate against other people. And there are a lot of things to a match up. For example, that doesn't show like your knowledge against every. It doesn't show your knowledge against different characters. It just shows your knowledge against like the best characters on average, or the most common characters on average. Just uh, an example. Ooh, fucking Barracudas, dude! I don't like it. Ooh, Barracuda. Last vehicle's a gyrocopter, actually. 
Oh, you said that snake. I didn't even see it. Shocks me that points. God. People think points dictate skill. Maybe it takes more in melee sex, or I don't know. But I don't see I don't see Daigo lose that often. I've seen Japanese players playing Street Fighter. Third Strike more often than Street Fighter 4. But I've seen Japanese players playing Street Fighter with win, win rates of like 100, like 117 wins in a row. I've seen Daigo in exhibitions at uh, um, Street Fighter 4 where he's playing random people in the crowd and shit and it's like made out of Street Fighter players and he doesn't lose the whole time he's there. I don't think, I don't, I think winning is quite consistent in Street Fighter. I think the better player usually wins with pretty good reliability. Counterpoint, um, Topanga. Very few of the matches are 3 0. But also a counterpoint. Um, God, fuck Barracudas. The only control you have over your character in this area is how high you go when you hit A. <gasps> fuck. I hope I didn't need him. Smash, the better player will tend to win is just because they play with a fuck ton of stocks. And that's sort of what, like, um, in Street Fighter in a competitive setting, you can't change how many rounds there are. Well, you can actually. Yeah, why don't we play with, like, fucking five rounds? It's not, Snake, it's not always exactly the same. Uh, a good example is Dive Kick. Dive kick, the winner is decided off of one instance. So even though there's five rounds, you'll notice that it frequently takes all five in order to determine. Um, like, you'll notice that there aren't consistent winners in dive kick. Even though people can be much better than other people, the game is. There's nothing inherently random about dive kick, but just the fact that it's d dictated off of one instance makes it kind of a toss up who's going to win. Like, if you had a game where one guy had a 40% chance of winning and another guy had a 60% chance of winning, and they played like a thousand games together, the guy with a 60% chance of winning would almost always win the majority of the games. But if they played one game together, um, it'd be like a toss-up. Sometimes it'd be one guy, sometimes it'd be the other guy. It would almost be 50%. Oh, let's get the banana. Banana bird. Wait, Saxor, I just I just misread what you were talking about actually. You said that's the definition of a good game in comparison to a bad game. Like the better player wins. That's definitely true. In a better game, the better player will win more often. Oh, I thought you were talking about something completely different. Secret really though. The bonus problem. 
before. This level's hella cool. I love the atmosphere. Oh, watch out. Oh. Honestly, it would be uh, the, the only difference is that meter manager would become a much bigger issue. There would be more supers, probably. Or maybe less supers. So you usually see super to close out the last round. But you could use a super with confidence that you get that meter back. the stars on the side the first time I did this. So I had to do it like twice. I've never met anyone like that snake, so um, as far as I'm concerned, you're, uh, I've never had to interact with anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, it's a complaint about someone who doesn't exist. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying I've never interacted with that person. I've never met the guy who thinks he's hot shit for fucking being for losing the Daigo. I've never met the guy who thinks he's hot shit for losing the Daigo. <laughs> what happened? I got behind the waterfall? Um, that's my plan right now. Thank god. I think all fighting games have big fish and small ponds, and to be honest, my greatest experience with that is Smash Bros. I think Smash Bros is a game that not a lot of people know how to play, but a lot of people think they know how to play. Very few people actually take Smash Bros to a serious competitive fighting game level. There's a lot of mechanics that most people aren't even aware of. But there are a lot of people who just beat like the people in their circle of friends, and they're like, I'm good at Smash Bros, I beat all my friends. It's not the way you're supposed to get that. But who's complaining? I've lost all kinds of pros. I usually don't brag about it. 
the only thing I've ever bragged about, I don't really brag, really. I think it's kind of suicidal to brag, because um, in Street Fighter and in fighting games in general, you frequently have to put your skill on the line. It's like, you can say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so good, I beat Daigo. And then it's like, oh really, let me play you. And then all of a sudden, like, fucking, you have to fight someone. And whether it's true or not that you fucking beat Daigo, like, if you just lucked out, you're gonna lose. Well, maybe you're not gonna lose, because this guy won't necessarily be as good as Daigo. But if you're, like, if you're bragging, and you're not good, then you're gonna embarrass yourself. And if you are good, you don't really need to brag, because other people will think you're good anyway. I'm not that good, though. I'm okay at fighting games, but, like, the standard has gone up so much ever since the internet. Honestly, like, people used to play at fighting games and not even be that good. Now everyone's good at fighting games. Now, like, the common man is, like, skilled at the game. So the fucking... the uncommon man... People have to go a lot farther to distinguish themselves. You used to be like a good player of a fighting game just because you were like you actually knew the punish to a move. Oh god. Like you were the only guy who knew to punish X. And then you were the guy who could like blow up. Like the guy who kept spamming X. That never happens anymore. Or it happens less. You could, like, win in old fighting games just because you were the only guy who knew combos. Now everyone knows combos. You guys wouldn't believe what old fighting games were like. I'm, I'm not even that old of a player. I played before Street Fighter 4 came out. So it's not like I'm super old school. But definitely, I'm probably a better... I'm probably a better Street Fighter 4 player than I am a Street Fighter 3 player. But... Most people don't know how to play Street Fighter 3. Where's my barrel? What's my... How do I kill this guy? It's over here. is a vice, and I don't mean that in like a fucking Christian way or anything like that. I literally just mean fucking, I think it's a, a mental, a mental barricade that can stop you from being a better player. Yeah. <gasps> 
fuck me. How am I supposed to react to that? Wow, I can go up here too. I don't want to do that. Let's take the other way first. Yeah, I've seen both. Yeah, we're good. Got one as Ellie, got one right at the bottom. From flying with Dixie Kong. Oh god, this is the this is my least favorite level in the game. There's a hungry fish behind you. You have to f If he gets too hungry he will bite you. He will get hungry if he eats urchins, he will get less hungry if he eats those fish. His color indicates how hungry he is. No, stop. Why would you do that? He fly. He always hovers directly behind you at a certain distance. Oh god, no. Trying to keep him from eating urchins is fucking harder than it seems. They put urchins, like, in your path. Right now he's probably quite content. The most annoying thing about this level is it's really hard and arduous to fucking... It's a chore getting to the end. And, um... You need both Kongs alive at the end in order to get the coin. Coin for the K. Eventually, there's something down one of those. Uh, you didn't miss that much. I did have a minor rant. It wasn't a rant. I don't even remember what I said. It must not have been important. A lot of these little areas are like, like where they would hide shit, but they're they're not hiding anything. They're not bothering to hide anything because um, the fish are there on reward. What's the point of this fish? Blue fish follows me around and wants to eat me. But I can keep it fed and then it won't eat me. It's nice and fed. 
Uh, I thought there was a bonus room in there. Maybe down below. I honestly don't even remember it. Damn, that's not one either. It wasn't even a rant. I think I said something profound, but it can't have been profound because I don't remember it. This fish does have the fucking added bonus of eating all the enemies. Which is kind of cool. You have to avoid feeding it urchins because it doesn't like them. Why did I come here? I'm not even collecting all the coins. Oh, I nearly did. I should have just done it. Oh god. Eat, you fucking asshole. This fish is a fucking bitch. I hate this fish. Oh, but yeah, um, you have to beat this entire level with both Kongs. Here. It's like here. There's a bonus room. I don't remember where. It's up here. He's gonna kill me. Alright, cool. So now the fish actually has to eat all the enemy fish. Which is kinda fun. This is honestly one of my favorite platformers. But this is my least favorite level. Just a chore. Did not know that was a Donkey Kong Country 3. That's amusing. My fish respawned all fucking nice and full. Wish he did that last time. Yeah, so here's fucking icing on the shit cake. Can't get up there by yourself. Need two Kongs. So if you're playing on tough stuff, you gotta do the whole level without taking damage. I think I bumped into an enemy or something. I already forgot how I got hurt. But now I can just start select if I take damage. Now that I've already beaten all of them. And I don't need to take fish damage just to get bonus rooms. You stupid fucking fish, why are you eating potions? You don't even like them. Stop! God damn it. I like to see a map of this whole area. It's huge. Fortunately, he can't eat enemies that are sufficiently off screen. Which means he's going for an urchin, you can swim away, and he won't eat it. You gotta be fast, though. This is probably the most annoying Kong buddy in the game. Uh, Donkey and Diddy get captured in this game. The overt story is, um... You have to look, you're Dixie and you have to look after your kid cousin for a while, who is Kitty Kong. Um, but also, at some point, Donkey and Diddy were kidnapped by, um, uh, Baron K. Rolstein, who may or may not just be King, King K. Roll. King Kroll. You stupid fish. I swear to God, stop eating urchins. Just trying to do what's fucking best for you. Make it all difficult. Eat. Fuck. I'm gonna waste so much time on this level. I thought I was doing all good and shit. Fucking stupid fish. See, that time he was going for the urchin, but I got sufficiently far away. I always forget that urchin. No, fuck. It's definitely a cool idea for a level. And it's definitely, actually, genuinely quite difficult. These are things I like. Why? Be 
bad enough if you only turn purple for merchants. But if you ever played Magic, one time, I played a red deck. I played it against, I think, a green deck. I won. I remember the deck was 90% volcanoes. Or mountains, rather. Not volcanoes. And I remember I played, like, fucking, f like, six mountains or some shit. And then I had something that got stronger with more mountains. I don't fucking remember. I literally don't remember. It was like a dragon deck or something. There were a bunch of dragons in it. I think. Honestly, it's been too long. I've played Magic exactly one time in my entire life. I, in general, don't like unkillable enemies and platformers. Alright, this is where I took damage. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was here. That fish is getting impatient. I'm gonna be like two steps away from the other level. Magic is cardboard crack. I tell my friends you said that and they're gonna love you. They're gonna, think they're gonna be like, that's the funniest thing. Alright, cool, my fish ate something. Good fish. I think I won. I think I'm good to go. Here we go. Our games are fun, but they seem like a fat money sink. And I've already got a money sink. Magic seems cool because it's more about your creativity. And less about your... there's no like element of execution or anything like that. I guess it's more about money too though. But if you're like drafting or whatever... Wasn't drafting at least a little bit luck based though? I don't know how drafting works actually. Well card games in general are luck based. Say that. I haven't thought about fuck yeah, King in like five years. Greatest boss in any video game? I didn't kill him. Ah, uh, metagaming. Pokemon is like that, Saxor. Competitive Pokemon. Not Pokemon cards, but I guess Pokemon cards is like that too. But, um... Like, you get a flower from going up there eventually. There's definitely a reading element going on in Magic, because I know you can, like, have... You can make decisions, like... You can decide not to play lands, just to have more cards in your hand. To make your opponent wonder what the cards in your hand are, for example. I know shit like that. 